Church of England began hearings into child sexual abuse today, Inside Out understands that police are investigating a complaint by a former priest against a group of senior clergy and their failure to respond to historic abuse claims. Matt Allison from West Yorkshire says he was ignored when he disclosed his abuse by a parish priest in Bradford as a young boy. I went to meet him. On an industrial estate in Batley, West Yorkshire, former vicar Matt Einson runs a small ecclesiastical supplies business delivering to churches across the country. They're all made for measure, so you're four to six weeks. Many would find it hard to understand how he still has anything to do with organised religion. He says he was sexually abused by a parish priest more than 30 years ago. His alleged attacker took his own life rather than face justice. But Matt says the church has still not investigated his claims and wants senior clerics, who he says ignored him, to face charges. By lies, by cover-up, the church, as I say, has gone out of its way to protect them. There's a police investigation uh, ongoing at the moment. Uh, there's a potential for uh, those bishops to be investigated. Decades after Matt says the abuse took place and there's still no independent inquiry, and Inside Out has found evidence that the church appeared to know that Matt wasn't the only alleged victim of the same priest. Back in 1984, Trevor Deva Manicum was vicar of St. Aidan's Church in Bradford. There was a complete family breakdown. My nan, who was uh, my uh, carer, I suppose, looked after me, brought me up. She turned to the church for help. Matt, as a troubled 16-year-old, was sent there to stay alone with him at the vicarage. That night he came into my room um, and put his hand under the duvet um, and started to try and uh, uh, sexual things. And uh, he said to me, does that not interest you? And I said no. And he got up and left. And the second night he did exactly the same thing again. And then over, it became, you know, over time he, he sort of said that I had to do what he wanted, otherwise I would be put me out and I'd be out onto the streets. And the abuse got worse. You say it got worse, it, 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 he raped you? Didn't yes, you? several times over several um, weeks, about a three month period. It took you decades to come forward and talk about it, didn't it? I didn't see my family for seven years after that. Um, and then just didn't talk about it because I apparently didn't feel believed, but there was a shame that comes along with it. And what was it that encouraged you to, to talk about it? What, what made you come forward? Well, I became a vicar and was in South Yorkshire and there was an allegation of sexual abuse of two children in the parish. Uh, the church were approached with that and I was unhappy with the way the church dealt with that. And because of that, I then disclosed my abuse to the Bishop of Doncaster and said, this has happened to me. I've been here and I'm not prepared to allow it to happen in my parish if I can do anything about it. I resigned as vicar after 10 years in the parish. This is Holy Trinity Church, where Matt last served as a parish priest. He resigned in 2013, a year after he first spoke out about the abuse that happened 28 years earlier. He said the church's lack of concern about his ordeal had left him no choice but to leave. But making that stand cost him his livelihood, his home in the vicarage and his reputation in the church that he was now about to challenge on the outside. Trevor Diva Manicum was eventually interviewed by detectives and was due to face trial last summer when he killed himself rather than attend court. Matt lost his chance to have his day in court and publicly express how his life had been blighted by the abuse he'd suffered. And he claims it gave the church a chance to brush his claims under the carpet and ignore his calls for an investigation. We know Diva Manicum left the parish in Bradford soon after Matt's stay but over the decades, he held seven church posts. Whilst in retirement, living in Oxford in 2010, he once again inquired about officiating in the church, but didn't apply after being told there'd be background checks into his past. And shortly before his death, this page from his social media profile listed someone called Rent Boy as one of his contacts. Inside Out asked whether the Church of England knew of any other allegations against Stephen Manneken. They said background information wasn't held centrally, but in each diocese where he served. I've not believed I was the only one. I've never believed that. 
and we put in a data protection act request to the church they are refusing to release a lot of material but one thing we did get was a memo from um, t from the safeguarding officer at bishop thorpe palace to the archbishop of york this is the memo it states that matt is one of the survivors of the alleged abuse by mr diva manicum it clearly states on that memo that matthew is one of the victims of Trevor Diva Manicum. It's something the church has always denied, and if that's true, why does that memo exist? The Archbishop's Office told us that the reference to survivors in the plural was down to human error. They say they've only ever dealt with one victim. It's marked as noted by the Archbishop in June last year. The Archbishop of York's office says he didn't fail to act because Matt's claims were an issue for the Bishop in his own diocese. We'll never know how deep this runs, we'll never know what cover-ups have been successful until we get complete disclosure of all the files that have ever been recorded. Matt Einton made official complaints against four very senior clerics. Matt says he verbally disclosed first to Peter Burroughs, the Bishop of Doncaster, and Stephen Croft, the then Bishop of Sheffield. He says he also told Martin Snow, who was Archdeacon in Sheffield at the time. He then wrote to John Sentamu, the Archbishop of York, complaining of the abuse and the failure of his bishops to act. The Archbishop wrote back in 2013, saying, Please be assured, I will keep you in my prayers through this testing time for you. But Matt says still no action was taken. The Church of England refused to hear complaints about all four, based on its own so-called one-year rule, which deemed them out of time. The bishops themselves were consulted on making that decision. So too was Diva Manicum. He didn't reply. It was in this Rotherham cafe last November that Matt alleges Peter Burroughs added insult to injury. This signed statement from a Rotherham undertaker says he was sitting next to the bishop in his robes when he heard him discussing Matt's case openly. In the statement he wrote, I found it unbelievable that a sensitive subject was being discussed in such a flippant manner in such a public place with no regard for who could hear. In a statement on behalf of Bishop Peter Burroughs, the diocese expressed regret for not offering Matt better protection and support. They said Matt's complaint against Bishop Burroughs was a matter of dispute and they were unable to comment further at this time. Frustrated by the church's response, Matt began to demonstrate outside church meetings. He called for resignations and a police investigation into senior clerics. This is how the church reacted. I was asked by the very senior judge who was hearing the complaint um, for my views. So I was asked to give evidence basically to that judge, as indeed the other bishops were. Um, the judge weighed up that evidence and he uh, decided there was no case to answer. Matt then complained to the church that Martin Snow lied in this TV interview and that this amounted to misconduct. The church's response came from the very top. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, concluded that the bishop's account is not a very accurate representation of the process and might have misled. He said a live broadcast gave no opportunity to reflect on the accuracy, even though the interview was recorded. The Archbishop wrote, I will speak to the bishop about the need for accuracy during public engagement. Matt has appealed against the Archbishop's dismissal of his complaint. The head of safeguarding for the Church of England appears to have some sympathy for Matt. The Bishop of Bath and Wells, Peter Hancock, wrote to him admitting that his treatment had been shabby and shambolic. Matt spent nearly 10 hours giving a statement to a detective at the Sheffield Police Station. Inside Out understands the investigation sought advice from the Crown Prosecution Service before suing the inquiries. Matt has now finalised his statement and interviews with senior church figures could now follow. Six years since Matt first spoke of his abuse, He's still waiting for an apology from the church and changes at the top. It doesn't look like they're willing to do this voluntarily. So it looks like as a result of the national inquiries going on, um, there may be legislation that forces them to do it eventually, but that's going to take two or three years. The church cannot be trusted to do its own safeguarding. It covers up and manipulates and colludes with the abuse. Matt and fellow survivors hope the next three weeks of evidence to the National Abuse Inquiry will help the church to deal with future claims in a more transparent and compassionate way.